Hey everyone, my name is Elias. I'm a solutions architect at Algolia. For the next 20 or so minutes, I will be doing a deep dive on Algolia, its core capabilities, and some new AI features that we have. So I'm gonna jump right into the dashboard and let's get started. So jumping into the deep dive, we have this demo store that's implemented Algolia. What I'm gonna start with is showing you the autocomplete experience that we've built. As soon as I start clicking on the search box, I'm going to start populating a whole bunch of results. First, I got some recent searches. I got popular searches. I got products and articles. This is what we call a federated search. That's because we are bringing back results from different indices or different categories. Um, part of the autocomplete experience is having really fast search as you type experience. So as soon as I start typing, I'm going to say maybe a MacBook, M-A-C, I start to get results. So you can see in popular searches, I'm getting a MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air suggestion and then the product. Well, actually what I'm seeing in the product is some, some decals. Maybe if I start typing M-A-C-B, uh, there we go. I start to see my actual MacBooks. So as you see, the searches you type brings back really relevant and fast results. So if I kind of maybe make a misspelling and I type in Mac book like this, you can see I'm still matching MacBook Airs. So if I search this, I still get my results. Another thing really quick that I would like to show is the ability to handle plurals. So if I type in MacBook Pros, I'm still gonna bring back my MacBook. So this is our current dashboard. And as you can see, it's really set up to mimic what an actual search experience looks like. We got a search box, we got the facets on the left-hand side, and we got our results. Now you can see one big difference is that the results are set up in a sort of detailed view. Uh, we have all the attributes that exist within the index, as well as their values for all of the products. This is helpful because it allows you to find when you do a search um, where uh, exactly the matches are happening and then also gives you an idea of why a certain product is actually coming um, at the top or really at any specific spot. So as you could see, um, the first result is this Apple MacBook Air. And if I go down to the second one, I have this really awesome medallion here that basically gives me an exact reasoning for why this is second compared to the result on top. And as we can see, the tiebreaker is popularity. So popularity is a custom ranking metric that we have, and that is 9,471 versus 9,472 for the preceding result. If we wanted to look at potentially making some changes and kind of getting an understanding of how uh, some of this stuff works, we can go into the configuration. And the first thing within configuration that I'd like to talk about is the searchable attributes. Searchable attributes are basically a subset of the attributes that you have in the index. And that subset is really meant to capture the attributes that are most important to get matches on. So the order in which we have these actually makes a big difference. If I change the order, say, let's say categories to the very top, a match that happens on categories will have a higher weight than one that matches on name. So I'm going to leave this the same way. I'm going to take a look at the next configuration, and that's ranking and sorting. As you can see, there are two things that show up here, one ranking criteria, and then custom ranking of popularity. One thing that is actually really important and every implementation by default has is this textual ranking criteria. When I expand it, you'll see it's actually a set of seven predefined rules. So for example, a result with more typos will always be ranked lower than one with less typos. Another example would be words that are more physically near each other in a query will have a higher uh, textual relevancy than those that are further away. 
And as you can see, I, I had mentioned earlier, searchable attributes, the order in which they appear matter. And that's where this comes through. The position of a matching word within that searchable attributes list makes a big difference. And then finally, once I've kind of matched all of these and broken the ties, we look at that custom ranking. I'm actually going to do is I'm going to switch over to the merchandising studio, which is a dashboard that we've created primarily for merchandisers. Really, it's made to kind of enhance the merchandiser's experience. So as soon as you click on it in the home, you automatically see some quick analytics, some key entries. So um, shows you the last seven days and the last 30 days for for revenue analytics, for the user and search metrics, for the top searches and top results. And then we have the visual merchandiser. What you can do is click on curate this query and it'll automatically take you to the virtual mer visual merchandiser with a query is MacBook set up as a trigger already. And you can jump right into making the rule changes. So I'm gonna make an assumption that a new MacBook Pro just came out and I want to basically prioritize those over the current MacBook Airs that are on the top. So what I can do is click on boost categories. I'm going to go to level four. And what I'm going to do is search MacBook Pro. I'll click on apply. And now all of a sudden, all my MacBook Pros are at the top. That's great. And maybe what I also want to do is do a new strategy and filter my results. I'm going to filter the ID and I'm going to filter the ID to computers and tablets. Actually, what I need to do is computers, tablets, and laptops. There we go. So now I only get the laptops. So I'm gonna go ahead and review and publish this rule. If I look back at our actual demo site and I search for MacBook, what do we have? Well, look at that. The rule is applied in here as well. See, that happens instantaneously. That's one of the nice things is that there is no re-indexing or anything like that that needs to happen when I create a rule. It automatically goes through. Let's go back into dashboard here. Let's take a look at our analytics dashboard. What we can see is at the very top, we have a date range and we can go back to the last three months or the last month, uh, Let's go and choose the last 30 days. And here you can see, we can see the total number of users, the total searches. We can see this no results rate. That's the rate percentage of searches in which zero results were found. A click-through rate, that's the percentage of tracked searches where at least one result was clicked on by the user. Um, we have our new revenue analytics, the average order value, at the cart rate and the purchase rate you have the average click position. And now at the bottom here, we have the top searches, top results, searches without results. We can dig deeper into the searches by going into the searches tab and we can see all of the searches. And if I click on a specific search, actually I can see all the popular results for that. And then also the popular filters for the search. And then finally, I have some analytics for category pages as well. So I can see the all the category pages and I can see their popularity. I can see the click-through rate and conversion rate specifically for a category. And then I can see the popular results for that category page as well as the popular filters. Now, I do want to jump back into the Algolia dashboard here. And what I want to do is talk about some of the other features that have been released within Algolia. 
So starting with personalization, this is a tool that allows you to personalize the results for your users. So whenever a user is on the site, they get assigned a, a user token, right? And as they do events and as they kind of go through the site, those events are saved. And what we can do as a merchandiser is basically set up a strategy for personalization where we take some of these events and we can essentially prioritize them and add weights to each event based on what we view as the most important. And then secondly, we can add some facets, which, you know, what we essentially indicate as important for our personalization strategy. So if we're looking at the electronics, right, um, we can add a facet for, for the category page ID. So our popular categories, brand. So for example, maybe we say that brand's really important. So if a user um, you know, has an affinity towards a certain brand that gets prioritized in the search results page. Now, in order to show dynamic re-ranking, I have to jump into another index. So here we go. So this is dynamic re-ranking. What we'll do is we'll basically re-rank results based on what has the most activity. So we get this, create this attractiveness score for Jewel Records. Um, for the number of clicks and number of conversions, the ones that have the most will have a higher attractiveness score. And so we'll start to boost those. This is a great way to kind of limit the need for merchandisers to constantly boost or bury products based on um, popularity uh, because it, this will do it for them. And then finally, query categorization, which is a way to automatically boost uh, specific categories that the system believes best matches a certain query. So for example, uh, men's sweater, it has a very high confidence that it best fits the clothing category. Same with women's pants. It's certain that it fits best in the women's clothing section. So this is really powerful as well because it can basically create more relevant results because it's boosting a specific category. And it also actually has the ability to filter certain categories if you tell it that you want to do that. So in here, I have filter disable, but I can enable it um, on a certain kind of level. So I can say if it's very high or if it's certain that this is the best category, it can filter specifically that category. So the last thing that I would like to talk about is neural search. Neural search is basically a combination of our keyword search as well as vector search. And it allows us to kind of enhance the queries that we can support. So that's gonna be like very long queries, queries that are way more specific, queries that sound a lot like spoken language. I have a great example of this. I'm gonna jump into the demo here. And what I'm gonna do is Let's pretend like I'm a parent and I want to buy a laptop for my son. All I know is that my son really likes the game League of Legends. And I don't really know anything about laptops. I don't know about gaming laptops. I don't know anything like that. So all I know is that he really likes League of Legends. So maybe I'll type in laptop for League of Legends and I get nothing. Why am I not getting anything? Well, most likely none of the laptops in the index have the words League of Legends. So there's no way that our keyword search can basically make a match for League of Legends. And if I was a merchandiser and I saw that maybe a lot of people were doing queries like this, I would have to go in and specifically find this query and you know potentially create a rule to remove the word League of Legends in order for me to bring back laptops or maybe create a synonym for gaming and League of Legends. This would take a lot of time, especially if I wanted to do the same thing for um, another game, potentially. So with neural search, I could go ahead and enable it. 
all of a sudden I get some really relevant results. So I go from zero results to 104. And as you can see at the top here, I have gaming laptops, I have some other laptops. And so it's able to make a match on laptops. Obviously we can see that here, but then also it's able to take the context for League of Legends and know that this is a game. And so what I'm really looking for is a gaming laptop. And so I'm able to bring back some gaming laptops. We could try this with some with a few other queries. So for example, maybe I am looking for a TV, maybe find a TV with 1080p and 50 inches. There we go. So I have some 1080p TVs with 50 inches. This is really really awesome. I'm now able to really kind of type like I would like I would like I would speak. Essentially, it's more natural. Um, and I can find my results. Let's see, maybe another um, example would be find me a gaming monitor. Cool. So we can see here that even though I'm bringing back a lot of relevant results, there are some results here that are not necessarily very relevant. And so, you know, we have a pressure monitor here. Now, this could be okay. However, because we want to allow merchandisers to still be able to, to merchandise even on our neural search, I can take this query and Go to my index, create a rule, give me a gaming monitor. And one thing that's really cool is that I can basically filter my results to category page. And there we go. So now, not only am I able to bring back results, I can now bring back way more relevant results. There we go. And that was it for the demo. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to check out any other content that we have on the site, as well as some more in-depth tutorials at academy.algoya.com. Thanks again. See you next time.